Anyway, my name is Ted Gibson. Um, I've been a hairdresser for about 25 years, and in that 25 years, with a beauty school license, the things that I've been able to accomplish is amazing. I'll say it again. For those of you who don't know, that having a beauty school license can make a major, major, major difference in your life. How many of you out there, when you decided to go to beauty school, someone told you not to do it? How many of you, someone said, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister said, don't do it. You're gonna stand on your feet all day long. You're not gonna make any money. You really need to go to college and get a four-year degree because that's where you're gonna make all the money. They lie. They lie. I'm the most expensive haircut in the world at $1,500. You can clap. You can clap a little more. There we go. Thank you very much. For those of you who do not think it's possible, I'm here to prove it wrong to you, because it is possible. Sure, $1,500, but don't forget my tip. They say, don't tip the owner. That's a lie. Tip me, baby. Tip me. <laughs> uh, I'm originally from a little town called Killeen, Texas. My dad was in the Army. We traveled all over the globe, from Japan to Hawaii to Germany. We'd always go back to Texas, so I pretty much grew up in Texas. But with that being said, I am a child of the world. What it really helped me to do is to adapt to different situations in an instant and know the different cultures of beauty. And it's always been my platform that it doesn't matter the color of your skin, it's always about textures of hair. Because you can be very, very light and have kinky, kinky hair like Deborah Messing, who's one of my girls. And you can be very, very dark like Lupita Nyong'o, who's one of my girls. Does everyone know who Lupita is? Does everyone know who Deborah is? If you don't, you should do some Googling. <laughs> some of you may like me, some of you may not like me, but what you think of me is none of my business. It's the truth. Because I would not be up here today and have the following and the most expensive haircut in the world for $1,500 if I cared what you thought about me. Because I'd rather just be in my apartment. Because I'm really shy. I am really shy. I am. I'm an only child. I went to barber school first in Killeen, Texas. I was the first student at this particular barber school. I moved from, Minneapolis, or from uh, Killeen, Texas to Austin, Texas to work for my mentor, who's still my mentor today. So for those of you who are hairdressers and you don't have a mentor, I feel really sorry for you because you should have at least two. This woman's name is Zan Ray. I worked for her for about three years. And then from that point, I decided that I wanted to move to Minneapolis to work for a major manufacturer called Aveda. I worked for Aveda for about seven years, and in that seven years, with that license, I was a basic beauty school teacher. I was a global educator for the company. I created some of the most amazing products that they still have to this day when I, I lived in Minneapolis. And then Horst was the founder of Aveda. I worked with, directly with him. He has since passed on. And he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And he said that I should move to New York City to be an editorial hairdresser and an educator. I moved to Minneapolis, or from Minneapolis to New York City. I started doing shows in Milan, Paris, and London, and New York, and built a really great reputation within that community. And I was the hairdresser that I only wanted to be a fashion hairdresser. 
I only wanted to do fashion, which meant I would only do shows in those places. I would do editorial for all the major publications. <clears throat> and then it started to be about celebrity. I did not want to do celebrities at all. Because if you're a celebrity hairdresser, you lived on the West Coast and you weren't very good. It's true. If you lived in New York, you were a fashion hairdresser, you created the trends because you were actually the trends from the runway, which went down to the hairdresser, which went down to the consumer. I have a story for you. I was doing all of these edu editorial for all these major publications, and I was doing some for Marie Claire magazine, and the fashion director came to me and she said, you know, I really think that you should, I have a job for you. I said, what? She said, I'm shooting a cover, Marie Claire is shooting a cover, Cosmopolitan is shooting a cover, we're all shooting it the same day, and I think you should do it. I said, is it a celebrity? She said, yes. I said, I don't want to do it. You know how it is when someone says something to you and you're like, um, no, maybe not. That was one of those times. I ended up, she convinced me I should probably do it. The reason why is because everyone's seen the movie Devil Wears Prada. Yes. I cut those bangs on Annie Hathaway, if you didn't know that. Also, if you remember, in the movie, she says, get Patrick on the phone. Do you remember those moments? Get Patrick on the phone, get Patrick on the phone. She's talking about Patrick de Marchillier, who was actually shooting those two covers, Cosmopolitan and Marie Claire, in the same day. We were shooting them in London, and it was Angelina Jolie. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> Angelina Jolie. But I did it. And it changed the course of my career. It changed the course of my life. It changed everything for me. Because it was still, she was still that weird girl with blood around her neck. Does everyone remember that girl? Does everyone remember? She's not that woman today, is she? No. And I say the hashtag hair changes everything because I think the period of time that I worked with Angie from right after she adopted Billy Bob to right after Mr. and Mrs. Smith, oh, I'm sorry, adopted Maddox until I, that was really weird, right? <laughs> she divorced that one, by the way. <laughs> she um, left Billy Bob and adopted Maddox to the time right after Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And I would say that period of that woman's life was really remarkable. And I feel like that I had a part in that because of why I'm her hairdresser. And for those of you in the room who don't know your value, I feel sorry for you. Because the hairdresser is the most important person on the planet. Is that all I get? I'll say it once more. The hairdresser is the most important person on the planet. We're the only people that are licensed to touch by, except for who, a doctor. <laughs> Serious. And if you don't know the power of touch, you should come feel my hands. <laughs> <laughs> The power of touch, ladies and gentlemen, is the most empowered thing in the world. Many of you sitting in this room have not been touched in weeks. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> you haven't been touched by your husband? You haven't been touched by your wife? You haven't been touched by your kids? You haven't been touched by work? It's the truth. So when a woman comes to me and sits in my chair, or if I go to the Beverly Hills Hotel, or if I go to her townhouse, or wherever I am, and all I do is put my hands on her shoulders and listen to what she has to say is the most amazing thing in the world. The most amazing thing in the world. And as a hairdresser, I feel like what I do on a regular basis is to contribute to just that by making women feel beautiful.
And for you straight guys in the room, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. All your wife and your girlfriend wants is three simple, simple, simple things. For you to tell her she's beautiful, can you do that? To tell her that she's wanted, can you do that? Maybe. <laughs> and listen to what she has to say. I think you guys should be standing up cheering me on because that will get you, oh, there's kids in the room. That, that will get you so much in your life. You, those simple three things, ladies and gentlemen. Those simple three things will change everything for you if you listen to your wife or your girlfriend. It's all she wants is those three things. And I can tell you that's the reason why I've been able to be so successful. Am I a great hair cutter? I'm a great hair cutter. Am I an amazing hair cutter? No. But I don't have to be. And I can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. So um, does anyone have any questions for me? Yeah. What? <laughs> I have <clears throat> Christina Williams with your first question. Hello, Christina Williams. Hi. Hello. So I know you already elaborated a little bit on how you became a celebrity to the stars, mm -hmm. but aside from having an amazing personality, which oh, you do, do I? have. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> and skills to match. Is Thank there anything you. else that you would say helped you become a celebrity? Did stars? everyone hear the question? Yes, everyone heard the question? Um, I believe in saying yes. Amen. I believe, in, I believe in saying yes. I think that's part of the key is saying yes. Thank you. You're welcome. We also have Spencer Weary. Hello, Spencer. Hello. Hi. So I was just wondering what we as up and coming stylists should be looking out for um, as we start our journey into this amazing beauty industry. Um, ask the question once more, please, a little louder. What should we, as up-and-coming stylists, be looking out for as we start our new careers in this amazing beauty industry? Does anyone have an answer for that? Opportunity. Opportunity. What else? Good Sorry? Good A good mentor. What else? Anyone else from this side of the room? No? Confidence. Confidence. OK. Anything else? Give me one more. Sorry? Perseverance, yes. Because if I could tell you, I, um, everyone know who Oprah is? If you have the, ever have the opportunity to listen to what she has to say, she's going to tell you that she's had more things that didn't go the way she wanted to than things that she did. And she wasn't defined by the things that happened that didn't go her way, right? So if you cannot think about and be defined by the things that may not go your way, it, everything is golden. And that isn't just part of being a hairdresser. I think that's part of being living on this planet. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have just a closing? Yes, of course. OK. Um, I'm going to say just a couple of more things, and maybe one more thing before I leave. I just wanted to say that I don't think that I did say that um, thank you to the International Institute of uh, Cosmetology for having me. Um, I, I really appreciate the things that you've done in this business. And I can say that there aren't very many people who have accomplished what you've accomplished. So I thank you very, very, very much from the bottom of my heart that there is nothing greater than being a hairdresser for me and being able to talk to people students in particular, to show them how great it can be for them. So I thank you very, very, very much for that. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for your time, and have a great rest of your day. I'd like to call up Carmelo Gugliotti to give Mr. Gibson a recognition award. Oh, so nice. I didn't even know I was getting an award. <laughs> Wow, thank you very much. 
I want to hear the same thing when you are in TV to say thank to everybody in Connecticut for the wonderful time I had that Sunday. Mr. Mr. Gibson, thank you very much for being with us. It's an honor to have you here. And for sure, I wish many people can follow your, your footsteps. Thank you very much. It's very important for all of us to have you here today. Thank you.